We're going to debate for a while how good a crop that is. And hi, everyone. Matthew Cruz with Comstock Investments. I'm going to be going through the August USDA supply demand report that just came out. There's some good news and bad news in this report. We'll start out with last year's grain ending stocks, 24-25 season. You kind of see we came in towards the bottom end of the range, 1.305 billion bushels compared to the average trade was looking for 1.321. So everyone was kind of expecting that they'd make some increases to the exports from last season to old crop sales. And they did that in a little bit more. Soybeans came in at 330 million. The estimate was at 345 million bushels. And last month, we're at 350. Some of the biggest changes or the worst news, I would say, was in the corn stocks. USDA did come in pretty high on the production estimates for this season. That increased ending stock carry over to 2.11 billion bushels. The average trade was looking for 1.93. Quite a big bump, over 450 million bushels from where we were at last month. And that's why you're seeing corn trading in the red right now. But that was kind of offset by some fairly positive news in the soybeans. I don't know if it's enough to kind of overtake what's happening in the corn right now, but the soybeans came in at 290 million bushels below what the average trade estimate was at. They were looking for 358 million overall, you know, so down from last month. Weed stocks, 869 million bushels. Again, a little bit below what the average trade estimate was looking for, 883 million bushels. So this kind of breaks down, you know, why we see what's happening right now. They actually came in at 188.8 bushels per acre. So if that were to actually come to fruition, that would be by far the highest yield that obviously we've ever had by quite a bit. Corn production overall came in at 16.74 billion bushels, which also is a new record by quite a bit. And I don't know if you caught our video yesterday, you know, Brian kind of highlighted that, you know, most of the attention is going to be on yield, but you actually have to take into consideration harvested acres. And the biggest surprise to this was that they increased basically planted and harvested acres by roughly 2 million acres. And so the average trade was looking for 86.7 on their harvested acres and it increased to 88.69, so almost 2 million acres. And that's probably the biggest change, probably more surprising, obviously, that I think is going to catch the market off guard than the increase in production. You know, everyone was expecting a bigger number. You know, we didn't know if it was going to be 184 or 186. 188 was probably on the high side, but obviously the season isn't done yet. And so like we saw last year where they increased the productivity in August and then by January, they pulled back the reins and reduced that. And so that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. And as Brian kind of highlighted yesterday, you can't just focus on the productivity. You have to look at the overall harvested acres. We kind of saw the opposite end. So if we're increasing our planted acres to corn, which was supposed to happen in the kind of the June acreage report didn't happen until now. You know, they're offsetting that in the soybeans, it looks like. And so they did increase that yield to 53.6, which was on the higher end of the range, but they cut quite a bit of acres over 2.4 million acres in soybeans. You know, the average trade was looking for 82.5 and they came in at 80.1. And so that's why you're seeing this production overall at 4.29 billion bushels. So really good news, supportive news in the beans. That's why you're seeing beans trading up almost 20 cents in the new crop right now. This is not the close and we're down 10 cents in the corn. So the corn and beans trading in opposite directions kind of following this report. Just take a quick look at overall global crop production. They were also kind of expecting a bigger increase in the Brazilian corn production. And that didn't happen. Looking to add 2 million metric tons. And they kind of kept it at 132 million metric tons, same as last month. Similar situation, the beans kept it at 169 million metric tons. The only change they made, they added 1 million metric tons to the Argentina soybean crop at 50.9. They also kept Argentina corn unchanged at 50.0. For world global earning stocks, it came in at 282.5 compared to 279.3. It's a little bit of an increase there. But then that reduction in soybeans at 124.9 compared to 120. 27.6 for the average trade guess. Wheat stocks came in pretty close with the average trade was at 261.7 compared to 260.1. So this just gives you a little bit different perspective, breaking down the differences that we see. We reduced the carry over here from last year that then brings over here to this spot. But biggest change was at 2.1 million in planted acres, 1.9 in harvested acres. We're adding 7.8 bushels per acre. So just those changes alone we're adding a billion bushels from what we were at last month. This is just compared to last month change. Pretty huge difference. You know, obviously people are going to argue that's on the high side, but average quite a bit more than what the average trade was at. The average trade was at 184 bushels per acre and USD is at 188.8. Some of the biggest highlights were they, you know, they did begin to offset some of that though by increased demand, which that 
always happens, you know, when we have a big increase like this, it doesn't just carry over to the bottom line. It gets offset partially by an increase in demand. And so they added 250 million bushels to the feed demand. They added 200 million bushels to the export demand. And so that kind of partially offset. There was another 100 million bushels in the ethanol demand. And so that's how we get down to this 2.11 billion bushel carryover. And so it's still a negative number for today. I think the trade is obviously, as I mentioned, pretty surprised by the increase in acres. And there'll be a lot of debate going forward on if this yield is actually obtainable. It wouldn't surprise me as, as the season carries on and we're getting too much rain here and in parts of the Midwest in August that we might see this reduced. And so I wonder if we're probably going to see kind of the low put in here in August, you know, as this is taking place. So jumping over to soybeans again, they made some reductions here just by increasing exports primarily from last year's ending stocks. It's 330 million that gets carried over to this point here. But we see the good news of the beans just because they reduced acres by two and a half million and harvested acres by 2.4 million. And so despite the increase in productivity of 53.6, you know, the added 1.1 bushels, we're still seeing a production drop of 43 million bushels. They also increased exports by 40 million bushels. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that this is the one thing that I have a big problem with that unless we get a trade deal done with China, I hope it happens. I still think it could happen, but until it actually happens, I think this number, in my opinion, is completely made up. And you could easily reduce that by 200 million bushels or more. And so while we do have, a, I would say this is a very friendly number, this 290 million bushels in ending stocks, depending on how the, the trade discussions go with China, that could easily get blown apart yet. But for the time being, this is what we have. This is why we're seeing the market trade positively. But eventually, we're going to need to see China start buying our beans Otherwise, I think you're going to have to, the USDA is going to be forced to kind of reduce that number. Just one more final thing before I sign off here. You know, we're already getting close, if you can believe it, to Brazil's next season in parts of Mato Grosso. They can begin planting September 7th. So we're less than 30 days away from the growing season, the 25, 26 growing season in Brazil. And of course, they're already coming out with some of their preseason projections for planted area and they're targeting 120 million acres in Brazil. That would be a 2% increase from last year at 117.3 million acres. It seems hard to believe that can happen just kind of considering the poor profit margins going on in Brazil. However, based off of what's happening today, that could actually change things. And so it now makes me think that there's a real possibility that they could expand acres in Brazil by 2%, getting close to that 120 million. Overall, I would say we probably overdid it again on the corn. The metrics were just too good on corn. So farmers, you know, rush and plant a lot more corn. And, you know, it turns out looking like we're going to have a lot better crop than what most people imagine. Of course, we're going to debate for a while how good a crop that is, if it's, you know, 194 bushels per acre or 190 bushels per acre. But right now, the USDA says it's 188.8 .8 bushels per acre. So that's what we have to look with. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you and have a good day. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial. And each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.